Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marco Regan. I am the Chief Technology Officer for Dell Technologies in Europe, Middle East and Africa. And I am delighted to be speaking to you from my home here in County Wicklow in Ireland. For the next 10 or 15 minutes, I'd like to talk to you around uh, the new distributed ecosystem and the emerging technologies that we're seeing coming out of this ecosystem and some of the trends that we're seeing the shifts and the movements at an industry level and also at a technological level. Um, so when I think about shifts and movements in industry, I can really pin them down to three core shifts. The first is a really interesting one for us at Dell Technologies. This is the concept of um, compute costs decreasing incrementally over time within the industry. So when you think about that, you might take uh, the view that us here at Dell Technologies um, wouldn't be too happy with this. It's quite the opposite. This cost reduction in the manufacturing and deployment of computer architecture into the ecosystem really, in our view, is a direct result and reflection of our commitment to open standards, to open source, to open communities, but moreover, our commitment to democratize technology right across industry, right across markets, and right across society, and inject that technology capability into the spaces and places, markets and industries, that we believe uh, is essential to the progression of you know, uh, services into those spaces. Um, the second interesting movement that we've seen is this exponential explosion in technology every five years. Now, when I think about this, I break this down into two core areas. There's the technological area and then there's the data area. So when I think about it from a technological area, we're really thinking about the kinds of services that we've traditionally provisioned and built um, versus the kinds of services that we want to build and provision for the next 10 to 15 years. And the impact that that's happening, that's having, uh, at a technical and technology and architectural level. Um, this is really forcing us to have to think, rethink, re-IP, uh, and inject massive R&D budgets into innovation and really, really put the thumb down on how we drive innovation into the heart of everything that we do. And this is an extraordinarily important part of our overall strategy at Dell Tech. If we need to innovate, the right level of R&D innovation budget needs to be applied. It's the 101 on innovation. Um, and as we handle innovation going forward into the next 10 to 15 years, that level and commitment is there for all to see. And, uh, and we continue to innovate um, uh, in order to meet the expectation at an industry level to drive the types of services into the organizations and businesses um, uh, within industry. Then the second piece of this is really around the explosion of data. So when we think about data, um, we've been doing a hell of a lot of work uh, at an industry level on how we treat data. So the application of supercomputing and high performance computing um, to solve critical problems such as Higgs boson uh, and the landing of the rover module onto Mars, uh, uh, cancer treatments such as neuroblastoma and uh, the evolution of uh, cracking the genome and uh, reducing the time and cost of the sequencing of a genome. All of these things happened within the last 10 to 15 years, the last decade, uh, decade and a half. And technology has been fundamental to helping us achieve that at an industry, at an industry level. But predominantly in business and in organizations, our interest in data has been fixed into the data center or database or data reservoir, into traditional data centers or modern data centers such as public cloud platforms. Um, data, just like uh, technology itself, has exploded. We're not just interested in static data. We're not just interested in historical or descriptive data. We're now interested in prescriptive data, near real-time data, or prescriptive data, data associated with an event that hasn't even happened yet. And we're interested in mining data 
at the core in these BI engines, in these databases, in these data sets, but also going out to where the data is born, out to the source of the data and being able to mine or perform some meaningful level of analytics out at that data source. And then implying and deploying uh, techniques and technology architecture to support the techniques of things like artificial intelligence in order to be able to look to patterns, understand those patterns in order to be able to actually create something that cracks a fundamental industry problem or business problem or organizational or even societal problem that we're trying to solve. Or indeed, use that technique in order to be able to surface something novel, something new that we can exploit all through the economy of artificial intelligence and its functions. Point is, we are interested in all types of data, structured, semi-structured, unstructured data, descriptive data, prescriptive data, predictive data. It is all there for the taking and it's how we actually apply our skill sets in the data science and data analytics domains and the underlying infrastructure to support that. So data is a huge part of that explosive te technology um, uh, uh, movement also. So with the explosion of technology and the explosive nature of data and what we've seen over the last 10 years, coupled with the reduction in compute uh, cost, what we're seeing then is this land us into an ecosystem which is moving towards a distributed architectural model or mode. So every 10 to 15 years, we're seeing this pendulum swing from distributed to centralized. And we're very much today in a decentralized, distributed mode, if you will. Interestingly enough, though, there is a concept of centralization within that decentralized uh, architecture, which we'll talk to in a moment. But these three shifts, the reduction in cost, the explosion of technology, and the distributed architecture that allows us to put the right level of technology into the right place, at the right time in order to be able to um, deliver services into those spaces so the experience and the outcomes are realized in an appropriate way are the things that are really driving the, uh, the industry from a change perspective over the last 10 years and into the next 10 to 15. The underlying technology pillars that support and in some cases drive that really can be snapped down into four or five pillars. The first, of course, is cloud itself. So cloud being an enormously valuable uh, uh, um, technology was born to us around 10 to 12 years ago with the emergence of the hyperscalers. So as we defined cloud um, and as we looked to standards bodies such as the National in Institute of Standards and Technologies and their definition uh, of, of cloud, we started to get excited around the um, potential that cloud computing was and did bring to us. Um, elasticity, uh, service on demand, self-service. Uh, extensibility and all of the things that you will find within the common standards definition of what cloud computing is uh, and how it was defined over a decade ago. Like technology itself though, cloud has matured and continues to mature. As we look to those core pillars and principles that underpin the standards of cloud technology, they've now come out of the hyperscalers and we're finding them in the private clouds and out at edge clouds close to the data sources that we mentioned earlier on. This is a really important movement to understand because we're now experiencing cloud computing as a digital operating model that takes us right through the continuum from edge into core or a control center and up onto public cloud domains and allows us to explore and exploit technology and service advantage as we go in a consistent and secure way. So cloud is the new digital operating model and that would be the first technological pillar that underpins all of these movements. The second technological pillar is data management. If we think of some of the things that we've spoken about over the last few minutes, cloud being a digital operating model which allows us uh, and presents us uh, with an architecture that we can do fundamental 
um, good with from a service delivery perspective, then this allows us to observe how data comes into an ecosystem, how we handle data, how data comes in through a factory line, in through a hospital network, you know, uh, in through a trading floor, in through a banking system, and how that data behaves and the different protocols that we need to observe and how we normalize that data, how we collect the data, aggregate that data, and treat it with some level of analytics in an appropriate way. And as the data starts to traverse across that network from the data source or from the edge into the core engine, being able to do uh, some sort of level of analytics, yes, but also being able to understand the movement of that data, the data time, the data flow, the life cycle of the data, how it's protected, the level of encryption that is needed to that data, how the data is archived in an appropriate way, and then how the data is accessed and reaccessed um, down in BI engines and other, uh, and, and other repositories uh, in order to um, develop further services across the ecosystem. This is a huge uh, opportunity for us to observe in the data management space. And that is most certainly the second trend pillar that we're seeing uh, from a technology perspective that supports us here. The third, of course, is as the data traverses across that network, um, we look to artificial intelligence and its application into business, into organizations, into society in order to make change for good. So looking at AI and the functions of AI, such as machine intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, supervised and unsupervised learning within those folds and things within the neural net space. Looking at the skill sets uh, and data science, how we can look at data scientists and have them look to mathematics and advanced mathematical functions uh, and map the right algorithms to the data sets and data points of interest in order to be able to unprice information from that data in the appropriate place at the appropriate time, using the appropriate architectures and using the appropriate techniques. Artificial intelligence is changing everything that we do and yes, we are entering into a data-driven world underpinned by digital architecture. And you know, this takes us then into our last pillar, which is security. As that data traverses, as we treat it with the right level of analytics, as we look to modern functions of artificial intelligence, such as machine learning and deep learning, and as we protect the data and understand the movement and the behavior of the data as it traverses across this ecosystem, and as we tap into public cloud domains to exploit the functions of public cloud and the value that public cloud can bring, taking that governance, compliance, control and policy and knitting that into our digital operating model in, within our control center, this journey and ecosystem from edge to core into cloud starts to become a reality for us. And securing the data right across that continuum is an extraordinarily important factor and is the last pillar uh, within this technological um, uh, this technological uh, um, supporting pillar space. Of course, 5G is emerging and other technologies. Um, this will give us the low bandwidth, uh, sorry, pardon me, high bandwidth, low latency required to deliver a lot of these services. And if 5G emerges in the way that we believe that it will, um, we will most certainly be able to land those services into the spaces uh, and realize all of those core pillars across cloud and cloud native architectures across uh, uh, the data ecosystem and um, you know uh, be able to um, exploit these services that we're looking to deploy into these spaces. The decade that we're going into is a data decade as I said and we're going to look yes to treat the traditional services that we have always treated but now look to some of these core pillars um, that are being driven through the industry shifts in order to be able to look into new services that we can deploy across our industries, across our businesses, across our organizations. The world is changing. Technology is a huge part of that change. And consistency is at the heart of delivering that technology capability into your business, into your organization, and across our societies. 
Dell Technologies were absolutely committed to the progression of human and te technological advancements. And we look forward to being part of that journey with you and your organizations and businesses over the next 10, 15 years and beyond. Thank you for listening. And I hope to speak to you all very soon.